Morning, everybody. Great to see everybody here today. Several announcements will dive right in. One, just a note on the parish calendar this Wednesday, February 26th, is Ash Wednesday. It is the beginning of the Lenten season. Here at St. Boniface, our masses with the distribution of ashes will be at 8 a.m., 12, 15 p.m., and 7 p.m. So again, that will be this Wednesday here at St. Boniface. You can please, as always, I do encourage you to take a copy of the bulletin home with you. Lots of good information in there, including the mass schedule. Also on the schedule, this is the last week in February, and so this is also the week of our monthly holy hour. That will be this Thursday from 6 to 7 here in the church. Uh, again, please feel free to stop by any time during that hour to spend some time with the Blessed Sacrament. And uh, again, that will be this Thursday from 6 to 7. During the Lenten season, we will be having our Stations of the Cross again. That will be Fridays during the Lenten season. It will be at 7 o'clock p.m. this year, so inviting everyone to think about including the prayerful reflection on the Stations of the Cross together here at St. Boniface at 7 p.m. on Friday evenings. Another note to the calendar, this isn't on a parish calendar, but this is on uh, just a general calendar. There are a number of fish dinners, of course, that take place during the Lenten season in our area. I encourage you to check out the schedules and so forth, the flyers that are posted on the bulletin board. We also have a little brief schedule published in the bulletin. Just to please note, one of the new fish dinners around will be at the St. Boniface Ushers Club Fridays during Lent. So think about supporting the Ushers Club during Lent. They do a lot to support us here at the parish. So again, that will be Fridays during Lent. As you to keep in prayer all the young people of our parish who are celebrating the various sacraments during this Lenten and Easter season, I ask you to please keep in prayer the young people who this past week celebrated the Sacrament of Confirmation. I ask you too to please keep in prayer the young people who are preparing for the Sacrament of First Penance. They will be having their retreat this morning and they're listed in the bulletin. Of course, our St. Patrick's Day reverse raffle is fast approaching. If you haven't yet turned in your tickets, we ask you to please do so, especially if you'd like to be included in the uh, early bird drawing, which will be next Sunday following the 1030 Mass here at St. Boniface. So again, if you haven't gotten your tickets in yet, please do so before the, this coming weekend as we will be having the early bird drawing following 1030 Mass next weekend, March 1st. Just drawing your attention to the, uh, oh, I already did that one, okay. Now we're getting into the inserts, okay. Uh, just a reminder again, the various uh, religious conferences are coming up. The men's conference scheduled for February 29th and the women's conference scheduled for March 28th. Information for those is on the bulletin board. Please take a flyer, please take a postcard and think about attending those. Knights of Columbus are once again sponsoring a food drive during the Lenten season. This is their famous thousand pounds of non-perishable goods food drive. Uh, this is part of their faith and works program. If the Knights collect a thousand pounds of food during the drive, it counts toward their work toward the Star Council Award. So please think about bringing some non-perishable food items in during the Lenten food drive to help the Knights out on that project. And then finally, uh, once again, we are doing the Easter Lily program. If you would like to purchase a lily that will be on the altar during Easter Masses, and then you can take it home to be part of your own Easter celebration. The flyer for that is in the bulletin. This is different from the memorial flowers contribution that people are invited to do, where you don't take the flower home. You simply make a contribution in memory of someone, and their name is listed on the memorial flower list. If you have questions about that, please contact the parish office.
Please stand and join in our entrance antiphon found on page 74 in the Breaking Bread, page 74. O Lord, I trust in your merciful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord who has been bountiful with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please join me in reciting the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy. For I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Our response is, the Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction crowns you with kindness and compassion. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. As far as east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. The Lord is 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God. For it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future. All belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. If anyone, should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be the children of your heavenly Father, for he makes his son rise on the bad and the good and causes to rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Evil is alive and well in our world today. Just watch the news for five minutes and you'll see that. When we witness or experience evil, we're always tempted to ask questions like, what could or should we have done differently to prevent these terrible things from happening? But that is the wrong question. We can't change the past, but we can change the present and shape the future. A better question then is what can we do to promote greater goodness now and to make better things happen tomorrow? That is the perfect question for our reflection 
as we begin this week the season of Lent. So often we focus on the negative side of Lent. What sins do I need to stop? Or what should I give up? Or what bad thing shouldn't I do? While repentance forms an essential part of Lent, it tells only a third of the story. The two other thirds are good things that we should do, prayer and works of charity. Put all three together and you have the perfect formula for spiritual growth this Lent. One part looking back in repentance and two parts looking forward in prayer and charity. While there are many ways we can put this formula into practice in our lives, today I will focus on only two. Going to confession and making a pledge to the Catholic Services Appeal. Let's begin with confession. On the surface, the sacrament of penance and reconciliation may seem to only involve repentance. But look closer and you'll see that prayer and charity are just as important. Prayer is simply communicating with God. We share ourselves with him. He shares himself with us. When we go to confession, we share with God our sins, our sorrow for committing them, and our intention with his help to avoid them in the future. God shares with us his unconditional love and mercy, washing away our sins and welcoming us home again. Our experience of God's love and mercy renews us so that when we walk out of the confessional, we go and show that same love and mercy to our neighbors in acts of forgiveness and selfless service. Repentance, prayer, and charity in the sacrament of penance and reconciliation. Now let's look at the Catholic Services Appeal, or CSA. On the surface, the CSA may seem to only involve charity. We give money each year to support diocesan ministries that help thousands of people in the 13 counties of Northwest Pennsylvania. But look closer, and you'll see that repentance and prayer are just as important. Every one of the ministries supported by the CSA seeks to address, in one way or another, a serious need. Where there is serious need, there is a serious obligation on the part of all of us to meet that need. By participating in the CSA, we repent of our indifference and neglect of the needs of our neighbor and recommit ourselves to answering God's call to love our neighbor as ourselves. That is where prayer comes in. The CSA isn't about throwing money at social problems. It's about discerning and responding to God's call as a diocese and as a parish to meet the needs of our neighbor. We can only do that in the context of serious prayer. Repentance, prayer, and charity in the CSA. Here at St. Boniface, we will make the sacrament of penance and reconciliation more accessible during Lent by hearing confessions not only during the usual time, which is before Saturday Mass, but beginning with the second Sunday of Lent after each of the Sunday Masses. This is something we're trying different this year. It came through our parish pastoral planning, thinking that maybe people would be more available themselves for confession, not before Mass, but after Mass. So again, this Lenten season, beginning with the second Sunday of Lent, I will be available in the confessionals until all confessions are heard after each of the Sunday Masses. As always, of course, I'm also available by private appointment, so if you'd like to schedule a private appointment, please just call or email me. be happy to do that at a time that is mutually agreeable for both of us. We also join the entire diocese in participating in the annual CSA. I hope that you received the letter that I sent recently, and if you haven't, hopefully you will soon. Our diocesan set goal has gone up this year, as it does pretty much every year, but I have no doubt that our parish's unfailing generosity will once again not only meet the goal, but exceed it. Remember, too, that every dollar collected above our goal stays right here at St. Boniface. This year's CSA project will be desperately needed repairs to the church bell tower. 
Regulars of the 730 Mass who were here a few weeks ago know exactly what I'm talking about. As you heard the tremendous crash from the bell tower. Uh, for those who weren't here that weekend, just to fill you in, the ceiling of the bell tower collapsed. Uh, for whatever reason, the bell tower was not finished as part of the renovation 11 years ago. And because of that, water damage from exterior leaks has accumulated over that time and resulted in the collapse of the ceiling of the bell tower. So thankfully, no one was injured in that, but it is a serious problem that we need to find a permanent solution to. Patching and short-term fixes, as we've done in the past, obviously were not successful. So we continue to seek proposals from local contractors, but as you can imagine, I'm sure doing the work that needs to be done to find that permanent solution will not be cheap. It will cost a lot of money. In the meantime, Commitment Sunday for the CSA is coming up next weekend. I ask you to prayerfully consider this week what you can pledge to this important appeal. And next weekend, we will all make our commitment together, filling out our pledge envelopes and placing them in the collection basket. Now, some of you have written me in previous appeals expressing that you were unable to make contributions at this time for a variety of reasons. And I want you to know that that's okay. I understand that, you know, I never want anyone to feel like you're being pressured or we're trying to squeeze blood out of a stone or whatever you might think when we send these letters out. I never want anyone to feel guilty because you're not in a position to contribute financially at this time. I understand that. But we need to know that. So please fill out your pledge envelope and let us know that on the pledge envelope. Then we won't send you the follow-up mailings. The purpose of the follow-up mailings is not to pressure people. It's to remind people maybe that aren't here on Commitment Sunday or maybe forgot their envelope to please make your pledge. If you're not able to make a pledge, please prayerfully consider participating in other ways. Maybe praying for the success of the appeal or participating in one of the ministries that are sponsored by the CSA. We do want everyone to participate in some way, but if you can't contribute financially, that's okay. Please do what you can. What can we do to promote greater goodness now and to make better things happen tomorrow? Repentance, prayer, and charity, the three marks of the Lenten season going to confession, and making a pledge to the CSA. Two important ways we can combine those marks for a fruitful Lenten season. Bring more goodness into the world and make better things happen by doing both this Lent. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathering our prayers together, we offer them to our Heavenly Father, who we know hears us and answers us. Please join in our response. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the 2020 Catholic Services Appeal, that our parish and our diocese may continue to do the work of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children of St. Boniface making their first reconciliation retreat this weekend, Gabriela Krasik, 
Bria Kuhl, Grayson Nice, Faith Lyle, Sophia Salter, Tanner Wisniewski, Sawyer Whiten, and Welly Yapel. That God would fill them with the grace and peace of this powerful healing sacrament. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, as we look forward to the upcoming season of Lent, may Christ lead each of us to grow as disciples, embracing practices of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations around the world, that God would inspire them to eradicate hatred, grow in tolerance, and strive for peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially John and Loretta Brindle, who we remember in a special way at this liturgy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, giver of all gifts, we thank you in a special way for the gift of the upcoming Lenten season. We ask you to help, help us take advantage of that time to grow closer to you through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you, 
that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to